Well, hello there. <laughs> Look into my eyes. Do you see it? <laughs> hello. Oh. How's everybody doing? Welcome to Seopolis. Sometimes we do silly things. Yes. Um, so... In the last episode, we got ourselves some ice, and as you can see, we have 11,000. Yeah, mm, I did not stop this at 5,000 like I planned. Uh, the other thing that we did in the episode was we created the machines down here. Oh well, yeah, we're getting free Nautilus shells. And we have put these things to work. We have our auto sieves here with some flint mesh. And items were getting pumped in and out of these things. We actually have some niter dust that has been backing up because our drawer is full. We have our trees still going. That's going well. Dirt is being made. Uh, one thing that I forgot to do was actually place down the block breakers, which we, you can see we have placed down. I do have them turned off right now with run with a redstone signal. The reason for that is we actually went AFK for a little while, and we've got a decent amount of stuff. We've got almost 1,000 tin, almost 1,500 nickel, and 700 iron. I also made some constant tan and bronze as well. And right now we're making more overworld matter. Sifting, sifting, sifting. The other thing that we did was um, we put up a windmill. We got some power going. I did put up a few more because inside these machines... I did add, well, maybe they're in the machines downstairs. I added these augments that will make these guys just a little bit faster called the Flux Link Amplifier. Pretty easy thing to make. We just had to make two lead gears, two electrum plates, and then the redstone flux coil once again. And made these, these speed this up by a little bit. Uh, it'll use up to 80 RF per tick, but our efficiency has dropped to 91%. That is no real big deal. It does work. Now, this stuff, very, very slow. This cobble generation here with a random block, whether it be sand or red sand, it works, sure. But I think we want to step up. We went through the machine's quest line. And we kind of ran through the linear progression here. And I think we want to take a step back and look at getting the aqueous accumulator, the igneous extruder, and then start looking at our way down to obsidian. And then this guy right here is going to allow us to make wireless power so that we can set these guys up outside of the base. And we don't have to have these cables running all over the base, making things look kind of janky. Now to get things started... We have the aqueous accumulator and the igneous extruder bookmarked over here on this side of our page. We need some copper, we need some glass, we need some iron, and then some of these redstone servos that we made in the last episode with the red alloy ingot, iron, and diamonds. Um, we have a few diamonds, as a matter of fact. We did a little bit of sifting, we still got 23, and as you can see, we have two redstone servos so we should be able to make this guy really easily we should be able to make the igneous extruder that requires a constant tan gear some invar a piston pretty simple there we go and we still have a little bit of our red alloy ingots left now why do i have gravel on me who knows so what i want to do is i want to take this aqueous accumulator and i want to actually move it out here instead of having the flopper the flopper does um, collect water, but as you see, it's rather slow. So we can take this guy outside along with some fluid pipe and our wrench, and we can place this thing down to make our lives a little bit easier, or at least accumulating water just a little bit faster. So let's pop out. And I'm not sure, honestly, how hard it's going to be to remove the flopper, but we want the aqueous accumulator here. And let's go ahead and go up and get ourselves a little bit of air and try to stay away from these bad boys. Hopefully this won't take too long. No, we got it. We got it. We got it. Pipe. Like so. And... Oh. Oh. We got it. We got it. 
Let's get back in the base. And I'll show you guys that this is actually collecting water a lot faster. At least I hope. <laughs> Forty four thousand or four hundred forty eight thousand four hundred fifty two thousand four hundred fifty three fifty four. You can see that this thing is working a lot better. Now, the way the aqueous accumulator works is like a traditional Minecraft infinite water source. If you have a source block on the right hand side and a source block on the left hand side, this will generate an unlimited water source for you that you can pump out of. And what we're doing is collecting a bunch of water here that I will eventually send into a ender tank, this guy right here, which will allow us to send water all over the base wirelessly. We can do it from this simple setup. So this is a permanent location for this, not a permanent location for this. Now, the nice thing about the igneous extruder, as we looked at in the last episode, is we can be a little more specific on the items we create, such as marble, which we are going to need to do at some point, sand, uh, I'm sorry, dust, we can actually get that, we can get smooth stone, we can get um, stone with a magma block, nothing underneath it in particular will give us cobblestone, sandstone will give us sand, soul stone will give us soul stone, which is nice, soul soil will give us netherrack. And red sandstone will give us red sand. So if I want to fire this thing back up, what I should do is place the aqueous accumulator here um, so that it is on one side of the lava and one side on the water. I believe what we have to do or what we need to do is to break something like this block here and then put the igneous extruder down and now it sees that it has water or lava rather on one side get ourselves a bucket and a slab which we have we don't have uh, the driftwood will work for now just for proof of concept i believe all we need to do is have water here the oh no oh no <laughs> There we go. Should be able to simply place water on this, and this should work. Not 100%. Let's try it. No. No. It can't have flowing water. Okay. It has to be a water source, then? I'm guessing. So if we do something like this... That is working. It's getting cobblestone, and we don't want it to get cobblestone. And as you see, it works really, really fast. We got two pieces just from that quick little turnaround. Um, so what we're going to need to do is eventually we're going to have all of this set up in a compact machine, and it won't be taking up so much space here. It'll be one little block. But we need to get soul soil underneath this thing. That is our next goal. So soul soil is made it in the fluid eyed transformation with soul sand and witch water. Soul sand is made in the same manner but with sand using witch water. Now witch water is a barrel over obsidian with lava in it. We should be able to do this. I don't know if I still have obsidian. I do. And apparently that gives me the quest complete. I also should have some slabs. One, two, three, four, five of those guys should give me a stone barrel. I need one more. Make a new a stone barrel, because I don't have one. We've used them all in crafts. And the water buckets, I do believe that we can just dump in there. Perfect. So to do this, I think it's going to be best to just have it right here for now. We'll place our stone barrel there. We'll grab one piece of, two pieces of sand. We will grab a bucket of lava and then another bucket of lava. So that we have two. And now it should be as simple as coming over here, placing the lava in and waiting for it to transform to which we can then put sand in here and turn it into soul sand 
then we can do it again and turn it into soul soil. That is a very, very weird way to do things. But I like it. And soul soil. Perfect. So now what we can do is change this block here for soul soil. And replace that. We will go get our pieces of dirt brick. Um, I didn't really show how to make this on camera, but dirt brick is made literally with dirt and cobblestone bricks. Cobblestone bricks are made with four cobblestone. Pretty simple. Yeah. Which is part of the reason why we started making so much dirt. It's not the only reason, but it's one of those, and we have 1,100 dirt. Let's go ahead and put some of this stuff back. And now, if we were to take our bucket and grab some water and place it here, this thing is starting to make cobblestone. What? Ah, uh, that's not right. Oh, I'm a genius. It's because we need to make the blue ice. That's right. It's not water that goes there. Um, It shows you in JEI right here that you need blue ice. Everything else is water. Um, the soul stone requires witch water, everything else, water. So, that brings me to this guy right here. We need to get some blue ice. Now, for our chapter challenges here in chapter 7, we need a stack, which is why we got so many um, ice. And I think it's time for us to pretty much dump our inventory out, with the exception of our crafting table, and just grab all the ice we can until it starts spewing out onto the floor like so and then we can just ship K it no we can't I guess we have to do it that way and that's fine this will be I guess a better way for us to keep track of what we're doing here So that's three stacks. We'll keep going till we get what we need. And with the ship click, we should get the quest. Com or no, we're not going to get the quest complete. With this, we have nine stacks of packed ice. We can use hit the uses on that. Should be able to make ourselves a stack of blue ice. Boom. Ice, ice, baby. Done. Nice. Now back in machines, I don't believe... It was just a quest to get this. It is a quest to get snowballs, which are also made in the blast chiller. But as we saw before, we need magma cream, which is going to require some slime and some blaze powder. A bunch of things we don't have. Now, if I were to put this by it, we should be making netherrack. Perfect. Perfect. And we'll go ahead and let this make a stack of netherrack. That's no big deal. We'll put our cobblestone away. And our packed, or our blue ice, rather. We'll put that away. Buckets can go away. And now it is time for us to start putting this to use. I've done a little bit of looking at what we're doing. And now that we're getting netherrack, I want to do something with it. So what I would like to do is set up another fired crucible and a piece of uranium here. And start pumping this nether rack basically into this system first we need to pump it through an auto hammer so that we can turn it into crushed nether rack then we can take this crushed nether rack and we can sift it with a diamond mesh and we can start getting sodium we can get glowstone we can get gold nether quartz cobalt and blaze powder we can also turn it into lava and four pieces of crushed netherrack turn into lava i would then like to send half my lava into the stone barrel that has um 
the obsidian so we can turn it into witch water. And I'd like to send the rest of it over into the blast chiller. So let us Yeah, it should just be lava so we can start making obsidian in the same way that we made ice. So I think what we're going to do is I think we can go ahead and start tearing some of this down, like down here, I mean. I don't really need these dirt production and the saplings. We don't need the both of these auto sieves. We do still need the auto compressor. And I don't remember if I talked about this. I put the regular auto compressor back in here because the rationing auto compressor will actually keep at least four of these ore pieces in here. So if you have a lot of ore pieces coming in, the auto rationing compressor will keep basically an inventory of your ore pieces making it to where it doesn't get like all copper ore pieces in here or all tin stuff like that but yeah i think we're gonna tear this stuff down let's go look we've got an excess of leaves over here we've got almost 1200 pieces of dirt here i think that's going to be enough so I think that's what we're going to start with because we want to pull the items out of that guy, but we can't pull out of the bottom. So we're going to have to come down and we need to get power and all of that stuff. So all of that being said, I think we can gain some room in here by taking out some of this. We don't need to take out the... Uh, This cable line, I think we're going to leave that guy in here, but the rest of this stuff we are going to take out. So, let's take the botany pots out, the hoppers, all of that stuff, and let's start there. Now, this looks a little janky, but we've got power run over to this blast chiller. We have this area cleaned up. I wanted to keep this area here because basically what I think we're going to do is we're going to take the items out of here and start pumping them into here. This is going to slowly start turning this into netherrack, and then we are going to have an item conduit here. We will have half of the crushed netherrack that is being made here go over into a fired crucible here, turning that into lava, and then the other half will come down here, and we will most likely just do something like this and we'll pump it into this sieve right after that this should be all set up for what we were doing it should take the gold and um the gold and the cobalt i believe yeah it should take the gold ore pieces in the cobalt and it should turn that into cobalt and gold cobalt is something that is going to be really useful and once we get into some emeralds, we can really start bumping this system up. So, with all of this being said, this thing is producing netherrack faster than we can hammer it. That's okay. We need to um, use this improved pipe upgrade here. And I need to get myself another fired crucible because I don't want to take the one that I have here. This thing is producing lava for our smeltery and we want to maintain that as long as we can so i should be able to make another barrel and i believe that i have some porcelain clay i do perfect so if memory suits me or s yeah if my memory is correct this should be the unfired crucible and now we just have to smelt this bad boy down, and we can get this thing up and running. A few seconds later, we have our fired crucible. We should also be able to put down a fluid pipe, and we need to set this guy to the left-hand side as an insert, which should connect it to the pipe. The next thing that we need to do is turn this into an extract and put this in here, and distribution round robin so that should take some of the lava and put it in here 
some of the lava and put it in here. So we will put a drawer back up here, which is our drawer that we had over here with ice. I took the ice and I didn't say anything about it, but we put it right here in this drawer, just connecting it up to the system for now. So this is going to start producing um, obsidian, and this is going to turn lava into witch water so that we can get more soul sand because soul sand sifted on a diamond mesh will get us some mushrooms it'll get us some blaze powder and what i'm really after is gas tears so what i think we're going to do is we're going to take some of this sand out of here and start automating a little bit of netherrack so we can try to get ourselves some of that stuff so now if I do this to an extract and we do the same thing here and we do a round robin, half of it should go over here, half of it should be going down to the auto sifter, which isn't going to work because I need to turn this into a diamond mesh. So to do that, we need a block of iron. We're going to take this block of iron and throw it in here. And to be honest with you, I can get rid of this. We will turn that off. We'll make sure that this side is turned off as well. And it should be as simple as putting the iron or the flint mesh in there, letting this guy melt, and then of course pouring it over that. After that, I've shown this before, but we'll show it again. I need to get myself 16 redstone flux coils, and we need to get a redstone servo, which is just iron, red alloy ingot, and a diamond gear. We got a lot of stuff that we need to prep. But first, we should be able to do this. Uh, our alloy ingots, unfortunately, we're going to need 16 of those. Oh, this is going to be kind of, kind of silly. Should be a half a stack or so of gold. And we can do the same thing with putting the red alloy ingots in here. And we can start smelting up some gold. Uh, we should have the iron mesh down here with all of our overworld matter that we've been making. We need four of those bad boys. We're going to have to start sifting some more. And we should be able to just place it in here and make another gear. I could use my diamond mesh that I have over there in the sieve, but why? Why would we? <laughs> Okay, so that needs one, two, three, four of those, and it should be as simple as a little bit of making sure my crafting table is open. Oh, I'm missing the alloy ingots. Okay, one, two, three, four. We're going to need to make some more of those, I believe. Redstone servo got, iron mesh got, and now we are simply waiting on this, which should be all of this. So now we just pour that over. So this is making obsidian. It is making um, witch water. What we're going to do is we're going to take this iron hopper that we stole from the smeltery, and we're going to grab about... I don't know, four stacks of sand. Does it have to be regular sand? It can be red sand. Perfect. And I'm thinking what we're going to do is we will disconnect this, put down an item pipe, and we're going to see if this works. Ah, uh, chest, 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 chest. We'll simply just grab a chest. I know this all looks kind of janky, but hey. We should be able to do like this. And now this isn't going to do anything until we're crushing more netherrack. Now this is going to be quite a slow process. But that's okay. This is a slow process. <laughs> just making this. So now what we need to do is wait or the rest of our redstone flux coils to be made, and then we're in business. At the induction smelter, we will place the redstone servo, the iron mesh, the 16 flux coils, and 
That's right, this thing does take a while, and I did make enough of these guys to put in some of these machines. So if we throw that in there, it should increase the speed a little bit, and it doesn't look like we're losing power. You can put more than one of these uh, flux linkage amplifiers in here, but I think this one will do us. Uh, now, as far as speeding this guy up, if we put a hammer in there, which... I meant to put in before it will speed it up. As you can see, it does use the durability. So this works without a hammer, but it speeds it up if we have a hammer in there. Another way that you can actually do it is if we were to take some food, we can... Does this work on this? I know it works on the sieve. I guess it doesn't work on this. Okay. On the sieve, you can throw food at it, and it will work faster. And this should be almost done. Come on. Boom. Perfect. All right. Now we have our diamond mesh. We should be able to come in here and hopefully... Aha! I saw a piece. So as I said before, if I were to take a apple and right-click it on there, this guy will start working faster as it gets crushed netherrack. Cobalt and gold are coming in, and we didn't really get anything else. I'm pretty sure that everything else should go into this uh, chest here, to which we can hook up our universal cable. Which I'm just going to do like that. And then set... This, of course, to extract, which is pulling out the niter dust, which is good. We've got soul sand, we've got obsidian being made, which we will throw a quantify key on this. Oh my goodness, 21 obsidian. And it's just making more. This is round robin, right? Distribution round robin. Okay, I wonder if I put a second hammer in there, would it speed things up? I really don't want to use up too many of our diamonds, but it's worth testing. That does speed it up. So it's using the durability of both of these and making netherrack... Crush netherrack rather faster. We should start getting more of that in here. We should start getting more of it down here. And we should start getting some pieces and parts. Ah. The. Hmm. Let's see. It'll turn it into solium blocks, it'll turn this into quartz, and it'll turn this into glowstone in the auto compressor. But it's not going to go anywhere from there. If I were to use an item pipe, and we were to go ahead and set this to disassembled, and we could make another advanced upgrade... Apparently there's a lot of them. This guy right here, if we were to make this thing. Real quick. We should be able to do it. So some iron and some redstone will make the basic. A little bit of gold and redstone will make the improved and the advanced boom got. What we'll do is we'll throw this on the pipe that we're going to put right here to suck out the solium and the other stuff. Right? So we're going to white whitelist solium and glowstone so it should pull it out into here rather than placing it in here.
Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. Oh, we broke the advanced pipe that was here. Ah, uh, we're gonna have to do some figuring. I think that's what we had before. Blaze powder's coming over here. We don't want anything into here, but it did move the niter dust, which is cool. So it's not pulling these items out. And I think that's because it's literally just looping them. So if we were to do this, it did what I didn't want it to do. It made a block of quartz. Hmm, we're going to have to figure this out. So Cobalt is now stuck in there. Which is weird. Pulled that out, but it won't pull this out. So it only pulls stuff from this inventory. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. We can do this. So if I were to take this and do this, if we do this... Okay, we can turn the solium block into solium dust, and I know we can do the same thing with the glowstone, and we can do it with this, and we can do it with nether quartz. So nether quartz should go down here. It does. Good. Uh, this is going to have to come out. It's clogging up my system. Oh, you know what? My system isn't hooked up. Because I broke this by accident. So cobalt, we're going to have to get another framed drawer for. I think we're going to need to get a compacting drawer for quartz. We're going to need to get one for um, cobalt and things like that. Blaze powder, we're just going to send here. So yeah, we're going to get some drawers placed in. And then I think we're just going to go AFK for a little bit. We actually went AFK for almost 24 hours and as you can see we've got almost 2,000 gold I have over a thousand cobalt we have the same thing in glowstone we have a bunch of solium and we have a lot of nether quartz so I've actually disconnected the pipe that feeds over to this stuff um, because we ended up getting some soul sand which we are going to utilize we have 2048 
uh, obsidian plus a stack. We have a bucket of lava here. We have some witch water. All of this stuff we can clean up, and we can actually move the obsidian probably to this area over here. Maybe put it in one of these guys. I do believe that we can craft this into compressed soul sand. We can. That gets us a stack. That's not a quest. As a matter of fact, let's look at our quests. <laughs> Um, because it has been a bit since I've been in here. So we have marble that we need to get. We have glass. We have wither skeleton skulls. Actually, this one's done. Um, concrete. Cobalt. Oh. Oh, I need witch water. Okay, okay. So we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of questing here. There we go. We've got witch water, and this thing did just do that. Um, so soul sand we need, which we can just do this. That completes a bunch of quests. We need soul soil, which we have underneath this guy. So we could probably just go steal it. This thing is lagging so bad. Perfect. We do need to check this igneous extruder and make sure that didn't grab anything it shouldn't have. Perfect. Um, then we need netherrack, which we are getting here. We need crushed netherrack. Which we can get right from sneaking in this thing here. Then we need the cobalt ore, the cobalt stuff, and we can complete some serious quests. So there is the cobalt piece, and we'll just wait to get a couple more as uh, this thing sifts through some crushed netherrack. Now while I'm waiting for this final ore piece in here, we did accidentally hit this guy with our wrench, which popped out our advanced filter here, which I did eventually add cinnabar because cinnabar is being made in the pulverizer. and. There was a lot of weird things that happened here. We ended up getting compressed gravel. We got compressed cinnabar because I had this thing turned around weird. And we definitely want to make sure that we don't touch this with the wrench. So we had to reset all this stuff up. But now we are looking pretty good. I'm just waiting for one more cobalt ore. And then <laughs> we can make the cobalt ingot. <clears throat> and we have nether quartz. We have solium. Uh, we can get compressed netherrack and compressed crushed netherrack. As a matter of fact, we can do that with taking nine of these bad boys whilst we're waiting. And we will go ahead and do this. Put it in our inventory for the quest complete. Then we'll take it out. We can do the same thing with the compressed netherrack. Boom. Place it back in here so it can continue to be crafted. We can get the ore piece, which is good. There is that quest. And throw that back in there. So now, what we should be able to do is just grab ourselves a stack of this. And that's nice. We got a bunch of quests complete. We do need to go this route or sieving soul sand. Hmm. We need to get a wither skeleton, uh, nether quartz, and solium dust. We should be able to just do that. And that. Quest complete. <laughs> All right. So that is the the quest line, and this is in chapter seven. Nether you mind right here. But anyway, blaze wood, wither skeletons, we still need to unlock concrete. Uh, I think we'll end up making a piece of marble, switching this guy out just to get a stack of marble. Uh, the hammers did eventually break in this, so it's going rather slow. But what I, one thing I would like to do now that we have cobalt is I would actually like to make a cobalt pickaxe head. And, of course, that sucked this guy out. We need it. Because cobalt is fast. 
if that makes sense. So I smelted up five ingots because I was unsure of how many ingots it takes. It takes two. Um, but this thing has light weight, which is going to make our pickaxe a lot better. So I believe we can throw this in here. Right now, our mining level is diamond. Um, mining speed is seven. We have 419 out of 760. This brings our level up to um, 800. Mining level is still diamond. But this is going to be a faster and better pickaxe for us. Perfect. And let's go ahead and do this. We got 18 more sea bucks. And I think in the machines quest line, we still got a bunch of stuff to do. But where I was really trying to get to was make flux. Can be used to make various items from Fl ne flux networks mod to provide wireless power. This does want us to take redstone and crush it onto obsidian. We can take molten obsidian and just cast it out onto redstone dust. 250 millibuckets. Nice. <clears throat> so I do believe... I do believe that this can be a flux block. Yes, see, it can be a flux block. So we're going to want to get into flux networks here soon, and we're going to need five, six, seven, eight, and nine, plus the Eye of Ender, which we have, or we can make. Um, wants us to get Nether Wart, but... Before we end things, I would really like to start saving some of this compressed soul sand and seeing what we're getting. We're going to get some blaze powder and stuff like that. And what I'm really after is the gas tears. So let's sift this out. Now, I only sifted a half a stack of our compressed soul sand and I got 10 gas tears. And the main thing for wanting the gas tears is this guy right here, the mob imprisonment tool. Because at some point later on, we're going to be getting plastic and we're going to go back into getting our mobs um, easier for getting the meat and stuff like that. Now, one thing that we need to do since we have the witch water is make a little bit of slime. We can then take that slime and, of course, make a piece of magma cream. And now we can make the uh, gem cast with some bronze plates. So, we need four of them. <clears throat> we should probably just melt them down over here. And this will get us the snowball quest in the machines. Which will be really nice. Once this does melt, we can move our lever over here. We should just make a couple more levers, honestly. But there is all of that stuff, and I think we're going to want to probably stop this machine for now. And we can do that by just breaking this. We'll let this thing sift or crush the rest of this netherrack. And we may want to actually start pumping netherrack into a spot over here. Plates should be done. And now we should be able to make the ball cast. Nice. Now, I do believe that I have to put a little bit of water in here. And unfortunately, this thing is full on lava. So, we're going to want to take this bad boy. And disconnect that. Like so. And then let this thing go ahead and run its course, making more obsidian. And I'm going to <clears throat> most likely just do that <laughs> and melt it down. We want to make sure that we turn that off. Let's let this thing run its course to where we can get um, some snowballs. And technically, we can let this thing run 
and we can dump some of these mushrooms in that we've gotten. We've got blaze powder, all kinds of things. Oh, when a normal skeleton touches witch water, it turns into a wither skeleton. And then we need to get a wither skeleton head, and that will complete that quest line. And then, of course, the chapter challenges is to get that. Blaze powders can be used in various different recipes. So we need to put wood. Blaze powder. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting indeed. A little time later, and we have snowballs. So I clean this area up, I put a drawer down so we can just collect some netherrack and eventually transport it over into this drawer here. Just so we have it for later, I'm not sure what we're going to need too much netherrack for. Um, then one thing I'm probably going to do is start making these guys here, nether brick, which we can just smelt in a normal smelter. Might be worth our while to put the redstone furnace in line and then get some kind of compactor or something at the factory that we have in here to craft into nether brick and get ourselves a supply of that as well. So I did put some items up in here. Um, We're probably going to want to make some more of these 2x2 two two drawers. For now, I'm going to put the gas tiers there and that cleans out our inventory. And... Let's see where we're at. So blaze wood is a thing that we need to work on. We did just get the snowballs. And now that we have obsidian, we might be able to look into these ender chests. Blaze rods, we're going to need a rod and a rod cast, and then we can cast out blaze rods. Interesting. So there's... Yeah, blaze rod here in molten blaze bucket. Ah. So we need to smelt down some blaze powder. Right now I've got molten obsidian in here though. And we were going to use this to make a bunch of flux. Which I guess a stack will be fine. Stack will be fine. Ender pearls is the only thing that we're low on, but we can reset the shop if we want to to buy ender pearls. I don't think, other than killing endermen, there's going to be an easy way for us to get ender pearl. There's ender pearl essence or enderman essence, which is an enderman seed, but it's a tier four, and we're not into mystical agriculture. Um, molten ender is from putting endermen in or the smeltery ender ingot, which requires the ender dragon. <laughs> Let's put the ender dragon in the smelt. How about that? Yep. <laughs> but we want to melt down some blaze powder and see what that gets us. We're going to want our bucket of blaze and then put the blaze back in, and we can start crafting up a rod cast and I believe we can make the prismarine rod is probably our easiest it is and once we start making the um, ender chest we can also make the ender tanks that we looked at which are these guys right here, they require kind of the same setup with obsidian, a cauldron, four blaze rods. And what we can do there is we can have a tank like this guy pumping into that ender tank, and then we can place water anywhere in the world. And I want to do the same thing over here with potentially lava. And to do that, we probably want to set back up We'll probably want to move the Igneous Extruder over to this location here. 
and then pump out into lava and then be pumping that into a jumbo tank. So we're not done with this guy yet. We're also going to use the Igneous Extruder to get ourselves some other items such as dust, I think would be wise. But we're going to wait for this to finish up and then see what we have left for Obsidian. There it is. A stack of flux dust just like that. We still have 20 Molt Obsidian. And I was actually just kind of looking at the uses of this. And we can make this stuff, this HEPA... Tizen uh, with two copper and a cobalt. And if we look at this, we should have made a pickaxe head out of this stuff. It has a mining level of netherite. It has the momentum. Uh, mining speed is 10. This guy has a mining speed of 8.56. Mining level diamond. And it has lightweight, which makes it mine faster, which is why I wanted to use it. But I think that we should go for the higher tier thing, right? So we need a cobalt and two copper. And we need to make sure that we turn this guy off. So let's grab a cobalt. And two copper. Perfect. Let's melt these things in here. And then looking at the uses of cobalt, I found this stuff right here, the Molten Queen's Slime. This stuff, I think, is going to be a very good sword blade right here. It has a huge durability, it has a attack of 2, which isn't great, and it has a speed of 7, but it's pretty decent. Manulin is honestly still the way I want to go this stuff right here but you need a molten debris <clears throat> this stuff has a attack of four and a, a high durability and insatiable and all that stuff and we're gonna end up making a cleaver is probably the plan for this but we're gonna need ancient debris and ancient debris we get from sifting netherrack on emerald mesh so One ingot, two ingots, copper, cobalt, and molten obsidian. Why is it not doing it? If we have too much obsidian, though, it shouldn't. It shouldn't matter. One block. One and two. Oh wow, we can make an ender chest. Hmm. Well, I didn't want to alloy in the um, furnace or the smeltery, so let's try this. We should be able to make the ingots right here in the induction smelter. That's going to be a lot easier, and then we can take two of these guys and melt them down in here and then make our pickaxe head after this thing is done pouring, which it should be right here. Perfect. Pulled all the obsidian out. Now we should be able to take two of these. No. Oh, we're going to need a higher heat source than lava. Hmm, okay. Well, I think we'll readdress this at a later date, but let's see what a blaze raw, a blaze powder in here. I can't do that either.
Molten Blaze. <clears throat> We can put a blaze in here to get it, but I think we're going to have to do it in the multi-servo press, which gives us like 20 millibuckets, and we need a thousand. Let's see, we should take this gear working die out, and that gives us 20 millibuckets. Oh, boy. We're going to need a lot. Uh, 20... 50 so we need 49 more i believe to get a thousand millibuckets of blaze in here and then hopefully we can just bucket it out there's a thousand buckets there and yes we can actually <laughs> nice i had to pause the recording right there for just a second but while i was waiting for a little bit of quiet so we could record. I did build another jumbo tank and I pumped all of the lava out of our smeltery. So eventually, as I said, we're going to get this lava tank hooked up to something that's going to make a bunch of lava. And what we can do is place in the molten blaze. So now we should be able to take two ingots and get them smelted down. We can make our pickaxe head here. Let me make sure this is shut off. It is good. And what I'm also thinking is we will make a new tool rod for our pickaxe. Just to make it a little bit faster. This is going to be a better head. So we will shove in two cobalt, but I really don't want to use the molten blaze. So what we should do, and I did a little bit of changing over here. And let's see, one, two, three, four, I guess, and then a little bit of glass. And we should be able to make a tank. One more glass and we can make this tank. That'll be good enough. We'll pump the Molten Blaze out into this tank. So we can place this down, we can close... <laughs> Try this again. We can pump that out. We can move this. And then we can just do... We're going to have to break this because of the way these pipes work. And then pump the Molten Blaze out of here. Perfect. Now we should be able to place in this tank a fluid pipe and just pump the lava back into here. And there's a little bit more lava in here than what can go in the tank, but that is fine for now. And we can put in our two cobalt, get a sand cast, place in the, uh, not the prismarine rod, we want to place in the stone rod. Go ahead and dump that out, and we were going to make the rod cast. For making blaze rods. That is correct. That is what we were using the rod for. Uh, hello? Oh, it did it for me. So we've got that, and it looks like we can grab this too. Looks like we only needed one ingot. I thought we needed more, but we can... Pull that ingot out. Place in two gold. And place in the rod. Shouldn't pull it out. Good. There we go. Rod cast done. And now if I had a bucket worth of this, I think we can actually pick this up. I think we can put this down. And I misplaced it, but that's okay. Can we pump this into the controller? Maybe not. Hmm. 
Do we have to pump it into a drain? Ah, there we go. So now we have the 900 millibuckets in there. We can simply remove this, put our drain back, and we can start pumping out our blaze rods here. Whilst that, we're going to go ahead and just queue that up to get nine blaze rods. And while we do that, we can change out our pickaxe here. Um... So this will give us a better durability, it will give us a better mining speed, and a higher mining capabilities. Can I place this in there? I can. This boosts our durability even more and our mining speed, so this is a much, much better pickaxe. Perfect. And blaze rods are being made out of all of this. Grab that singularity tank. And now we have some blaze rods. Look at that. Quest complete. Blaze rods. Um, we also did get into the fire. And I cannot remember. I think it's in the machines. Yeah, we have the molten blaze and stuff like that. Nice, nice, nice. Now, we did do some things like add in these crystal chests. As you can see, we've got nether brick and things like that. But unfortunately, we are running super long on this episode. So stay tuned. We'll talk about what we did. I'll show you guys what we did and all the setups that we had. But for now, this is where we are going to end the episode. Uh, we got ourselves a better pickaxe. We will be making a sword better than this pirate spader. In the near future, we will be also probably upgrading our axe. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, if you did, please make sure to hit that like button. Uh, comment, subscribe hit the notification bell any interaction with the channel is greatly appreciated check the description down below for all of the different ways to follow me including twitter twitch and a link to my discord thank you so much for watching and i will see you on the next one